Are there any other, any other boards or committees that need to be called to order? School committee. All right, apparently the uh, the finance committee is competing with a bomb cyclone for your attention tonight. Uh, so, <laughs> I appreciate you all coming out. I'm, I'm confident in our chances. Um, it's, it says the rain's going to start around 8 o'clock now, so um, we're going to get going. Uh, the agenda tonight, thank you for all coming out. Uh, we're going to hear from the permanent building committee on an update on the work they've been doing. Uh, we'll have a capital projects update. We'll look at, we'll do a, 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 a budget review of the current year and look at FY21 projections. We'll discuss uh, and vote on budget guidance for FY21. Uh, we might take a short break then, um, and then we'll come back and vote on the Warren articles. Uh, we'll, we'll take a look at our schedule, make sure that's all up to date, and just review minutes. Okay. Uh, so without further ado, I'm going to turn it over to the chair of the Permanent Building Committee, uh, Mr. Tompkins. Thank you, Eric. Um, Thank you. Uh, my name is Pat Tompkins. I'm the, uh, the current chair of the Permanent Building Committee. And we just wanted to give you a little update on what we've been working on as a committee. Um, what we've been doing is been going through the, the town buildings, doing an assessment of the, the physical condition of the buildings. We're at the point where we've gone through all the schools. And at that point, we kind of did a stop and put together a report that's currently in draft form. Uh, we've completed it and, and given it to the town manager. Um, and we're, we're now moving on to, to the, uh, the other municipal buildings. But at this point, we thought we'd give you an update on the, um, on the school buildings. Kind of broke this down into who we are, um, who we are, what we did, and what we found. Um, I'll try and be brief so we can get through it, especially um, since I'm competing with a bomb cyclone, as you pointed <laughs> out. Right. That wasn't um, meant to put any pressure. Please take the time, <laughs> Please take the time you'd like. So um, this is uh, our building committee. Um, I'm going to skip giving you everyone's biography other than to let you know that we have a, a good diverse group of professionals that are dedicated and um, we work very well together um, we've been working on this for a couple of years now we've been working together for a couple of years now and when I say that we, we work well together we really we rarely agree on everything but we, we have never fail to come to consensus on things so there's a lot of divergent uh, personalities, professions, from structural engineers and architects to uh, construction managers. Um, so our process, what we did, so we've been going through the schools and um, the way we've approached it is we created a, a baseline checklist, a template um, that we would give to facilities and have facilities fill out and rate every system in the building, everything from the carpet, the HVAC system, the lights and what have you. We would then um, gather up any available information we have for the for the buildings existing drawings um, the original drawings renovation drawings that may have happened um, equipment lists the AHERA reports which are the hazardous material reports um, there was an ad hoc building committee report from 2010 that had information on these buildings tried to get as much information as we could um, we would then tour the buildings with facilities which was a, a great exercise for um, a group of six to eight professionals to, to walk through with the facilities department, put a second set of eyes uh, on the buildings. Um, once we, we also discussed with relevant town officials, we spent some time with the fire chief last week when we went through the, the, um, the, the fire department. Um, and then we would all individually fill out the checklist and put in comments for each system, what we saw. Then we take, get together, take the checklist, everyone's comments, combine them, talk about it, debate, what do we think is important, what isn't, what are action items that we should put to facilities to, to address, and so on. Um, at the end of that, for each building, we would have a list of recommendations for the facilities department that would vary from asking the facilities department to hire a consultant to look at something that, that was a concern of ours to something as simple and mundane as, hey, we went into this, this room and, and there's a leak in the ceiling tile it's stained and should, should get taken care of. Um, for the most part, like, not for the most part, just about all of those items have been addressed at this point, probably 70 or 80 percent of the way through. Um, and the facilities department has been, been doing a great job addressing that and working with us on that. Um, Eventually, we created a report with those the checklists and narratives for each of the school buildings. Um, we've given that to, to the town manager for, for his review and for us to put it in a, a final format. Ultimately, I think this was a, a, a really good process on, on the buildings. And I don't want to say it, it dragged through, but, but Joe and Kevin have a lot on their plates. And they can't be in every boiler room of every building every day. And it was good to, to 
to walk through you know the bones of these buildings with them uh, again with a second set of eyes some of the things some of the things that we didn't do you know we're limited on time we didn't inspect every room of a building we went through a school we try and you know, we went through Coolidge. There's a, an original Coolidge and then part that was an addition. So we wanted to make sure we saw a couple classrooms in each area. Um, but we wouldn't go through every classroom. We didn't inspect the roofs of the building. Someone at some point decided that our committee shouldn't be on the roofs, which <laughs> was okay with me. <laughs> um, we also didn't, didn't perform any testing of the systems. One other thing we didn't do, we looked, at the, we looked at the buildings as facilities. So we're looking at schools, and this is actually a question that came up from the school committee. You know, what's our evaluation of these schools as you know, places to educate, for lack of a better term? And, and we don't really have an opinion on that. We can tell you, we can tell you if we think you know, the boiler should be replaced, but it, it, is the classroom the right size for the number of students we want to teach? That's not really, um, that's not our expertise. Um, last thing, what we found, the punchline is we didn't find much. Um, Basically, the buildings are, we think they're very well maintained. They're generally in good operating condition. They do vary in age from 15 to 51 years old. Going from sort of the latest renovation time, the, the newest building being Wood End, which we all think of as a new, new building, is 15 years old. Um, and the oldest being Killam, which is 51 years old, but hasn't had um, really a significant renovation to it. There are older facilities that have undergone um, pretty substantial renovations. Um, they generally speaking, you know, the buildings show their age in some places, but they're functional and, and they're well maintained. Um, big shout out to the facilities department. Uh, you know, we think they're doing an excellent job. They're on top of things. They, they're particularly the, the mechanical and electrical systems. Um, so they do a, a good job of maintaining the buildings. There's also like a good, well thought out plan for maintenance, and routine maintenance and inspections of the buildings that happens. Um, particularly in the schools, some of the things that go on every, every summer they go through the buildings and they wash and wax all the VCT in the buildings. They, every two years they screen and, and refinish the, the gym floors. The stage curtains are, are treated for flammability uh, on a periodic basis. There are a lot of things, um, th there's, a good, there's a good plan in place. We had a couple of suggestions, um, one of which was testing of the switch gear that wasn't happening, that's already been implemented. Um, Joe came back with a proposal that we reviewed um, when, and helped him and, and they've, they've already gone through um, sort of a staging process where they're going through all the buildings um, testing the switch gear. At least in a couple situations when they've gone in to do that testing of the switch gear, um, Reading Municipal Light has taken advantage of the opportunity with the building being down and actually swapped out the transformers. So now they have new uh, transformers to those buildings. So it's a lot of positive things. Um, one big takeaway is that we have multiple buildings, but we have eight, eight school buildings in the town. And if you think about a municipal building lasting between 50 and 75 years, if you just average that out over eight schools, that means every eight to 10 years you're rotating through a new building. Um, it's probably been about 10 years since we've, we've done anything. I guess 15 since, um, probably 10 since the high school, plus or minus, and 15 years since uh, Wood End was built. I'm no way advocating for a new school project, um, but it should be it should be sort of on people's minds that this is a snapshot in time today, and and <coughs> the buildings are in, in in good shape. But we need to, as a as a community, you know, we need to understand that they're not going to go forever, and it's moving. Some of the stuff that you know we rated everything. Some of the things that we rated high are going to deteriorate over time. Some of the things that we rated low might already have been replaced by facilities if we rate a boiler low. Um, but there's a, there's a plan in place to replace that. Um, this is a, I don't know if you can, can read this, but one of the things that we had, all of our checklists, we rated everything from one to five. Like we rated every system. We rated the carpet, we rated the VCT, the doors, the windows, the ceilings. And they all, they all work back to um, subcategories of ratings. And it's an imperfect system because some, some things are weighted equally that, you know, a boiler might be weighted the same as a smaller piece of equipment. So it's an imperfect system, but it helps you get, get an idea. And roughly everything ended up in the four, which is the blue, which is the good, you know, in the three, which is fair, which is, you know, still good um, for, its, for its lifespan. Um, I don't know if you can, s how well you can see this, but the other thing, 
that I think is, is interesting, and if we rated the buildings, and if we probably rated them, what you find is they kind of line up good to bad to the extent you could rate them good to bad by age. You know, um, wood end probably has the highest um, cumulative grade, and maybe Killam has the, the lowest, and if you run from the, the, the latest date of the major addition renovation, you know, they kind of fall in lockstep with that. Um, so big picture, uh, I think we, we've we got, the, you know, eight schools that are in good shape. They're being well maintained. We have a facilities department that's doing a good job. Um, they, they will rotate through their ages over time and, and we need to be cognizant of that as a community. Uh, I think we're 100% on the right track with what the school committee is doing right now because they're looking at the enrollment, the use in these different things. So if we do get to the point where one of these facilities gets to the point where, for lack of a better term, as a community, we have our backs against the wall and we have to do something, we'll be doing it in a well thought out and planned way. We won't just say, oh, we gotta renovate this building, or we gotta knock this building down. We should be able to address all the buildings, say, all right, what, what are the, the, the educational needs combined with the facility needs? So I think we're on, on, on a good track, and like I said, the, the punchline is, you know, we didn't find much. But, um, but again, <coughs> just one last time, I do think facilities is doing a really good job um, maintaining, maintaining the buildings. Um, and if anyone has any questions? And yes. As I said before the meeting, I, it's so understated the resource we have in this committee that, and boy, it's a new committee, so I think you guys spent a lot of time also figuring out how to best use the skill set you have and how the committee should run. And I think the work up front really paid dividends. And just because I witnessed you going through Woodend and saw the resources on this committee, I'm so thankful and it's a really great relationship with the facilities department. And so I can't say enough with the resources we have now in this committee, so thank you. Thank you, and I'll pass that on to the committee. And yeah. you know, I, I the, the committee did a, they, everyone else that's not here that's on the committee did, did a lot of work on this and they all did a great job. So. Right, a lot Good, of dirty details you. behind that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I saw those detailed templates and everyone negotiating like, this is how I rated this and this is why. <laughs> okay, you brought something else to the table than I thought of. And anyway, it's excellent. Um, I did have a question. Did you happen to look at, because you were talking about what you did look at, what you didn't look at, um, utility consumption or build and usage? Did you look at that? Uh, we looked at we looked at it a little bit, and um, we didn't we didn't really analyze it. Uh, uh -huh. We did get some information that's on on the right here. Um, <coughs> Sorry, where where is that? Um, um, we didn't oh, we didn't. Yeah. Oh, okay, gotcha. If I can manage this, yeah. So dollar usage per square foot. Which Did anything jump out at you there? That different than oh, okay. Yeah, wood end jumped out at me because it should be. I thought it should have been the lowest, and it's not. But it's it's probably. In, we didn't we didn't really analyze that yet, and this is in preliminary form. We didn't dial that in um, exactly. You know, some some buildings have gas. You know, they have different different utilities and different systems. So. Um, but that you know, wood end jumped out, and some of the other was the other one that was high. You know, wood end and um, uh, as a Coolidge, yeah, Coolidge jumped out as high, which I thought was was odd. But it is a one-story building that's that's pretty well spread out, so you know, that could that could be you know less than you know optimal efficiency. But um, we we got the information from facilities, put it on the chart. We didn't really dive into it and, an and analyze it, but it is it is, it is there and. You know, there's a couple of outliers that probably deserve a little investigation. Thanks. Um, I'm actually going to uh, piggyback on that as well. So two of the things that, that were mentioned that weren't uh, tested or looked at, one would be the roof liability concern, obviously, but has that been brought up to facilities to take a look at that? So every... So, so um, they... Every year, the roofs are inspected. So um, we and we did we didn't we weren't blind to the roofs. We looked into all right. So so what end had a roof put on? What's what's the type of roof? You know what's the warranty? Is the warranty still in effect? Do we have the warranty? And then more importantly, when we have like a 20-year roof warranty, the manufacturer comes out on an annual basis and inspects it. So they're doing two things. They're inspecting it so our warranty is valid, which is good. But they're also inspecting it and giving feedback to facilities. So yeah, they're, they're, the roofs are all inspected annually. Great. 
And then my second question was uh, testing of the systems. Um, is there like a CFM or O2 sensor testing that's done on the MEP HVAC systems? Because that would affect your energy usage, right? So if your CFM is, is low, it's going to take more energy to push it out throughout a building, right? Yeah. So Part of, our, part of our preventive maintenance program is to do, uh, we, we, when we went back to 2009, we did the performance contracting initiative, mm -hmm. and we, um, we were able to go through and replace a lot of the HVAC systems and get those sort of off the capital plan, blah, 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 and get a lot of work done. As part of the performance contracting initiative, Noresco, the company we contracted with, we're under a 15-year measurement and verification program. <coughs> Every year, we download all of our utility bills on natural gas, our water, and our electricity consumption and our dollar usage to them, and they verify that the savings are being met on the baseline that we did back in 2009. The good news is that we are still saving money off the baseline every year, and it does produce energy savings. The agreement we have with them states that if we don't meet the savings, the overall savings between the three utilities they'll write us a check, but we have to prove to them that we're maintaining our equipment. And so part of that means that Kevin and I have to send to them proof that we're doing, you know, diligent PMs on the equipment and we're going through and doing filter changes and boiler PMs. Yep. So to answer your question, so we are doing all that stuff. When we see a spike, we actually, and I'll be doing something in December where I'm going to report to you folks on the energy initiatives, but we, um, track our utility consumption using the M and V reports as well as uh, uh, a program we have through um, Dude Solutions, it's called, and we uh, it's called Utility Track. So we're tracking our utility consumption on a monthly basis. Great. So we're watching for spikes. We saw a spike today at one of our buildings, which is a little outlier, at one of our middle schools, and we're going to look into that. But we're not, you know, we're not getting a, you know, eight, a eight nine month what happened type of thing. Right. So and we're staying on top of it. So nothing egregious comes out. Uh, no, and the other thing to keep in mind, and this is a point in time too, like Pat said, so I don't really know when I gave him this information, but, <coughs> excuse me, a lot of times, you're right, wood end uses more, 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 um, more electricity because it's a lot of air equipment with some perimeter baseboard heat in that location, high ceilings. Yep. The public safety buildings use a lot of energy and the DPW garage. Um, so, it's a point in time, whether it's weather, weather does drive a lot of the consumption, yep. depending on when we gave them this information. So um, we do follow it pretty closely to make sure we're not, and we optimize our run times on our equipment all the time. Great. So. Also, just getting back to the, like, the tests and inspections <coughs> that are done by facilities, we, you know, they gave us the list of everything they did, and we went through it. There's a lot that I didn't mention here. I couldn't recite it all, so I just don't remember it. But there, 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 there's a lot of, of other things. Like, you know, one of the, the key things is the, the fire department inspections. I think they're in, the, in each school twice a year, at least once a year. Mm -hmm. Probably physically ringing out every device in the, in the building, which is obviously very important. But just one of a number of, of, of inspections that are done. Great. Thank you. Anybody else in the committee? Anybody else in the room? Mr. Doctor. Do you envision doing this every couple of years as an example, just some kind of cycle to go through? I know it's a big task. Yeah. But what, what would be the right frequency to go through it, particularly if we see some of the yellows? Yeah, um, that's a good question and something that we've talked about. So we're, we're like halfway through, so we're starting to do the municipal. We walked through the town hall and we just went through the fire station and we're going to the uh, west side fire station next. Um, so we're, we, we've kicked it around a little bit and you know, we're thinking something <coughs> maybe so that we're not, what we've been doing is we, every month we meet at a different place. And um, so to get through eight buildings takes eight months. And then when you don't get all the way through the high school and that takes two months, it's nine. So, so like the process we're doing now, we couldn't do annually because there's more than 12 buildings. It just wouldn't happen. We're kind of honing in on uh, maybe something once we're done, maybe quarterly and, you know, segmenting the buildings so that, so that we're hitting specific buildings on like a quarterly basis. But some type of this, you know, on a light basis, on a, you know, that we can maintain. We haven't got there yet, but I'm thinking like quarterly. Something that we visit a building quarterly, probably. Um, i just like to echo Paula's comments and, and say thank you for, for coming tonight to do this, but also to the committee, you know, to 
it's a real asset to the town, the expertise we have. So thank you. It's what you talked about also is a real testament to what uh, Joe and Kevin and the department have been able to do. So thank you for that as well. Um, one point that resonated with me was on the slide where you know what we're talking about the, the school buildings and the and the overall life and then in the average I think eight to ten years yeah. where there's a there's a renovation or a replacement of and it's in, in theory it's not every eight to ten years like you said but yeah. it just to me is illustrative of the general burden that we have in the town with with those buildings that yeah. we need to be mindful of I hadn't seen it kind of phrased in that way before every eight to ten years so I thought that was helpful yeah um, thank, so thank you, you. Thank you. All right. Thank you. All right. Next is a capital projects update. Um, turn it over to the superintendent and whoever else is, is going to help with that. Yeah. And I don't. Is anybody an expert in the lighting in this room? <laughs> Maybe it might help to, to dim. I can't see that. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not an expert. I'm not an expert, but I may have to turn it on. <laughs> it might just be a switch. <laughs> You're going to be an expert. 725. Can I call the select board? Oh, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to, um, I'm, I don't have any slides, but we're going to give you some brief updates on the, the capital projects that are going on right now. Um, which are all at various stages. So we have Turf 2, which is the furthest along, and you'll hear Joe will talk a little bit more about that in a minute. Um, I'm going to spend a little bit of time to talk about the elementary planning and enrollment study, and there's another piece to this, which we're going to briefly talk about tonight, but go into greater detail. It's and uh, Bob is going to give a brief uh, update on the, the security study that, that, that's been going on and the planning that's going on. I do want to commend the work of of Gail Dow, Joe Huggins, and Kevin Kabuzi. They have spent an enormous amount of time on these projects, countless meetings, touring all the buildings, um, working with the, the consultants and the architects. So um, what you're gonna hear from me tonight and the, the, what, you, what you're gonna be seeing as this goes on is a, a product of all the work that they've been doing. Um, so in terms of the elementary piece, uh, Last, last year, um, town meeting and school committee um, supported uh, funding so that we could start doing an, an elementary enrollment and uh, space planning study. And so uh, we have uh, employed DNAT associates uh, to do that work and they subcontracted out NESDEC to do the enrollment piece. Um, in a near future school committee meeting, we will be going through uh, the results of, of that study and the, the enrollment report. Um, again, that since last spring, there's been a significant amount of done primarily this summer. Taking a look at all of the buildings, uh, the elementary buildings, um, the space needs, primarily the programmatic piece, which has been the biggest driver of uh, the reason why we need additional space. Um, enrollment has stayed fairly consistent. Uh, you will see when we start reporting out on the enrollment that there will be pockets of increases in, in certain parts of town um, uh, over the next five to ten years with the enrollment study. But the biggest driver, and you'll hear a little bit in, in a minute, is also has been the programmatic piece, particularly special education programs and uh, the increased popularity of full-day kindergarten, where we now have 90% of our students in full day kindergarten, um, whereas 10, 15 years ago, it was 20 to 30 percent when, when we first started offering full day kindergarten. Um, so those have been the two, the two drivers. With the special education piece, just to briefly say, um, before I began my tenure as superintendent, uh, we had one program in the district special education program, um, and now we're up to nine or 10. Um, programs spread out through through the different elementary schools and the middle schools and, and feeding into the high school so it's it's certainly best for students and it's a much more cost-effective way um, to deliver the services that are needed for students that could go out of district um, to out of district placements which included transportation cost and tuition costs for uh, a placement in part uh, with the enrollment study, one of the things that we've been looking at also is a short-term concern that, that we 
are having uh, for space next year at the Birch Meadow Elementary School. And so tomorrow night we'll be presenting to school committee and you'll see tonight it's, uh, we'll, it'll be in the, the warrant that you'll be looking at um, that in an amount of money has been um, allocated for town meeting to, to look at um, for, to solve our space issues at Birch Meadow for next year. We're gonna need two to three classrooms um, and this is again being driven by the programmatic piece um, and we do have um, a slight enrollment piece uh, in the early grades next year which are causing the need for additional space at, at Birch Meadow and um, you know we'll go into more detail tomorrow night but essentially the reason why this study is being done is that all of our schools are pretty much at capacity at our elementary level um, and, and we know that that we've got some needs coming down the road. So that that will be discussed more tomorrow night, school committee. So I guess I'll stop with that, and if you have any questions, I can. I have one. Yep. You talk about the nine special education programs. Yep. Is the study looking at whether it makes sense to continue those programs? Like you said, I, I hear what you're saying, and we've talked about it many times, that it's more efficient from a dollar perspective to have these folks in district and have them do their the, the program internally inside Reading. Does the space study take into consideration whether those programs should continue to be in district based on the space needs? That wouldn't that wasn't the purpose of the study. We can certainly provide data that shows from an operating cost perspective it is much more effective to have the students in district than out of district. Even with space issues, like I'm saying, yeah. if, they, if there's expand, expansion required, the cost goes up. So does it make, still make sense, I guess, is the question. If you need more space in a, in a particular school and you have to shift things around, does it make more sense to say, okay, hey, we'll send these folks out of district? I don't love the idea, but is that being... It would be a significant increase to the operating budget. Okay. That's the answer. If, if students were going, more students were going out of the district. Okay. And we can certainly provide examples of yeah. what that would look like. We have in the past, but we haven't done it in a few years, so we can do that. Okay. Yeah, just curious. Thanks. Karen? Is, is there a metric that helps to um, communicate? I'm thinking ahead to town meeting. Because you look at the enrollment numbers, the numbers of the students are roughly the same, but the the students and instructor hours in classrooms. So is there one metric that, that shows how many students you need to put, how many places for how many hours with how many teachers? Because that would show why we're out of space, even though the population has relatively stayed the same. I didn't, I'm absolutely- So like, one we can show it um, is that we, schools based on the number of classrooms, and then K to two, we use the, the uh, class sizes of 18 to 22, and three to five, we use mid-20s, and what would be the capacity of that school for your general classrooms? Um, so we can show that here's the enro current enrollment, and here's what the capacity of the school is supposed to be. Um, so that, that's something that we could definitely do. So I think the kindergartens, as a great example, they're consuming more capacity than they were 15 years ago, significantly. And if you're then breaking out and expanding special education programs, that's again consuming more capacity than it was years ago? Correct. Okay, thanks. Tough to see you down there. So I'm gonna have Joe talk a little bit about the Turf 2 project. Joe? Yes. Oh, I'm sorry. Sorry, yeah. I'm sorry. Could you explain a little bit about what the nine to 10 specialized programs are? Are they like integrate, integrated programs? Are they specialized for, say, dyslexia? What, what are sure. the of those? So they're, they're varying degrees. So some are sub-separate classes based on the disability of the student, and some are um, what are called partially inclusion inclusion program where they do spend the majority of the time in the general classroom but do, do require space for their pull-out services. So it, it depends on the, the severity of the disability and the, the magnitude is, as to the needs. Okay. So I'm going to have Joe talk a little bit about the Turf 2 piece, which if you've driven by the high school lately, you can see is going along quite well.
everybody. I'll make this as uh, quick as possible. So uh, last year we um, contracted with Activitas to do a design for the replacement in kind of Turf 2 um, over at Reading Memorial High School. And um, it was put out to bid and awarded to Cork Construction out of Georgetown, Mass. And they began construction and August 12th, I believe it was, at which point they began doing the demolition of the existing turf too, removing all the fencing, um, installing erosion control around the whole site, and sort of getting things underway. Over the last several months, you've probably seen a lot of activity out there, and the old turf was taken away, the old fencing was pulled out, and they um, did some drainage work out there. Uh, I'd also like to say uh, that this project really wouldn't have happened if um, there's been a lot of different people working on it. It's been like a conjunction with the core facilities department, the DPW engineering division, and DPW, and the school department. Um, there's been a lot of oversight from uh, the DPW engineering folks, Ryan Percival, Chris Cole, who have been attending the weekly meetings with us and making sure from the civil engineering viewpoint that you know things are going correctly and that the town is being protected at all, at all levels. So that's worked out really well. Um, over the last couple of months, they've been um, working on drainage. Uh, we've ran into a few small snags out there. Uh, nothing, uh, nothing really notable, but typical with any construction project. Chris will probably agree with that. Um, the uh, the contractor uh, worked putting uh, the um, the lights are in. The lights are now in. If anybody's been by there, they'll see that the, all four of the new LED Musco lighting system fixtures are in and installed. Um, the field has been completely graded, compacted, and um, the poles and the nailer, the nailing strip that runs around the entire field for the new carpet to get glued to has been installed. Last uh, Monday, the contractor uh, received the carpet, which is the turf, and um, began installing. And if you go out there right now, I'm going to call it, which basically would be the field. The, 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 the center of the field with, is completely installed. They put up, what they do is they put something called a Brock pad down that's on top of the, um, the, 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 uh, the field surface itself. And then they install the carpet over that and sew it in place. They have a machine that does this. So it's, it's quite a process. They had close to 16 people out there working. They were out there tonight till almost seven o'clock. So they're making uh, really good headway out there right now. Um, the next step that's going to happen is they're going to probably be energizing the lights somewhere in the next week or, was it about the next week or two? Energizing the lights, yep. And um, the, uh, the turf field installation itself is probably about another two to three weeks, I would say, weather permitting. Um, we're going to get some rain tomorrow, which is going to slow it down a little bit. Um, and then there are other things that need to be completed. There's a new um, turnaround area for people to drop the kids off, bike racks, a bleacher area. Um, so they're doing all that. Cork Construction is doing that while Sprint Turf, the subcontract that's doing the field, is working on. So there's a lot of activity going out there's, uh, on there right now. So um, the contractor that's doing the work, um, Quirk Construction is, is, a, is a local company that we have had experience with in the past and very impressed with their uh, management team as well as the design folks that are working on it. So um, the project's going quite well. We're hoping to be, we're going to be offline. The, the plan was to keep the field offline for the fall season. And we can't really make any promises. It could be done the end of the month. It could be done middle of, no, middle of November. Um, but overall, I think the project's coming out great. Questions? Are we on budget? <laughs> <laughs> well, the bids, the bids came in below. The bids came in below the out the budget okay. allocation, and there's been a few change orders. And okay. I and I off the top of my head, um, I want to say it's under fifty thousand dollars in change, as well under fifty in, in total change orders on the project, okay. which is great. That's really good. Um, and I will tell you that the engineering department, anytime there's a, you know, I'm paying the bills, so, but that's okay because these guys are checking everything that's co <laughs> so coming in too because that's their forte, yeah. civil engineering. It's, it's in my backyard. It's, Kevin and I get to see everything that's going on out our, out our office window. So DPW is 
when necessary, scrutinizing the bills and saying, is this, is this appropriate? Is this legitimate? And then I get the okay and then we process. So um, it's going well. And I know we very consciously decided to make it a fall project because didn't you find the to try and do the project in the summer was going to drive the cost up a lot? So yeah, this is not yeah. considered a really big project for turf installation companies. It's a smaller one from what we were told and that a lot of companies that were coming off of larger projects would love this and that's, and you're right, we were able to get a better better pricing on it because of when we bid it out. Right, because everyone, everyone's looking to do it during the summer. Exactly. And I know we put some money into the operating budget, right, to reschedule th some things so that all went okay that we were able to reschedule, you know, more away games or whatever it took. Yeah, yeah. Because, yeah, that was a good cost-effective move to do because you naturally think, oh, do it in the summer, and then you realize you're paying top bill to do that. So. And it's your contractor um, told you that there are there aren't any of the PFAS, PFOS chemicals <coughs> that have been found in the field. Yep. And as a matter of fact, we, um, we we are we're aware of that concern, and there are no PFAS in any of the material in the carpet at all. Another, another question. Um, at, at a certain time, do you, um, when they kind of hand it off, is there going to be like a, a like a maintenance plan or yeah. something, um, or if we've identified ways to keep the longevity of the of, of the field, is there certain things? I mean, I've been in other towns where they don't allow dogs on. You know, I mean, right. like just examples. Is there, is there certain things that are kind of, and then you know, as a side of that. Is that kind of built in the budget where there's new signage or anything else that needs to be done? To Once the that? construction is done, there is going to be a period of time where, and I, I believe it's in the in the specs that we have a, a maintenance agreement for the first, I believe, first year. Turf 1 and Turf 2, um, well, we took Turf 2 out of the equation, but we uh, have a company that comes out and maintains Turf 1 and Turf 2. And um, that does three cleanings a year out there and does the GMAX testing on the, on the fields. Um, and keep in mind, we got almost 15 years out of that field, which is a long time. It was ready, though. The field right. was ready to go. Mm -hmm. So we needed to do it. It was, the timing was perfect. It, it was at the end of its useful life. So yes, we do. do we, just like we treat our mechanical system, it's on a preventive maintenance program. Our goal is to get as much out of it as we can. Is it, is it, well, what's the, it's, uh, it's 10 to 12 years. 10 to 12, that's right, okay. Thank you, Joe. Okay, thank you. Thanks, Joe. I'm going to give a quick update on building security. Let me just get a slide. Let's see. I'm sure that's hard to read. Um, broadly speaking, this, this project has proceeded at a slightly s slower pace because of a lot of what you've heard before. Um, I've only had two or three meetings over the summer, uh, but Gail and Joe primarily have been meeting weekly. They've been meeting with our security consultant as well as our owner's project manager, um, who happens to be the same fellow that uh, helped us with this project, the library building project. And, and I can tell you from having weekly construction meetings on this building that he saved us you know, easily seven figures um, in negotiating what the contractor would really need to get, get done. So it's still really in the planning process. Um, what we decided early on in the summer and just after town meeting a month or so uh, after was that we really had two projects very distinctly on our hands. One was to fix the D dispatch center, and we had discussed that prior at town meeting, but we then wanted to go with an OPM first. And then the other portion is security. So we're gonna likely, and, and for sure, have at least two RFPs or RFQs, two procurement processes. And I've spent most of my summer uh, thinking about the dispatch piece. Um, Obviously, dispatch can't just stop during construction and you know come back later. And we discussed a lot of options as to how to best do that. Um, some of them involved what I would call significant, maybe a little less than that, um, 
remodelings of the whole police station, <coughs> including adding some square footage outside where there's now HVAC equipment and a parking lot in some way, um, reconfiguring a space on the second floor, and then always, no matter what we discussed, was always the, what do we do in the meanwhile? What's the temporary location? You know, is it on site? Is it in trailers in the parking lot? Is it out of town or so somewhere else in town? And where we finally decided the best uh, use of the space, and again, keeping the function very local, was if you're not familiar with the police station, they're gonna move across the hall into what is a different use space. Uh, all their old equipment is gonna move over with them. Their current space is then going to be re-equipped with all the new equipment, slightly different construction, but not a lot of invasive construction. Um, there'll just be some minor construction. Um, and then when they move, they'll just move back into the new space, which was where they were, and the old equipment gets tossed. So that's really operationally by far the best solution, but there are a lot of construction obstacles to that. Um, because it, it is, does have to be a, a running police station. You know, we're going to take away a pretty big, big chunk of the police station for a short period of time. During construction, we have to talk through that with the different groups of the police department. Um, and we think that that will work out just fine. Now, we, what we don't have, again, through our OPM, we do have cost estimates, but we don't actually have anything near a 75 or 90% design cost estimate. So we still have a pretty rough idea, but we think we know how that's going to work. Um, in terms of the security piece, which I've spent less time on, uh, we're still in the stage of getting estimates for all the work that could be possible. Um, we knew all along, and, and, I, and I still know now, all the things that could be possible do not fit into the budget and never were expected to fit into the budget. So there has to be a discussion about you know, how do we prioritize once we get those numbers. Um, we've also discussed, from a timing standpoint, how do you approach building security? Do you do one aspect of it at all the buildings? Do you do all one building? And that, that is partly going to depend on who responds to the RFP and how they decide they do their work. Um, just like um, paving a main street, the contractor decided whether he started in the south or the north and how he proceeded. That was his responsibility. We couldn't tell them what to do. So to some degree, we have some control over this, but the contractor will tell us the best way he can proceed through the buildings. Um, what we do know is that all the school buildings will be treated fairly, equally, uh, including Killam. Um, I've stated, at least for the town's perspective, that the school buildings are more important. Sorry, Amy, you come in second. Town Hall comes in last. Uh, but obviously, um, you know, school security is, is the main point of this exercise, I'd say. I have here, it's, it's not maybe terribly instructive, but just a timeline to show that this planning process is extensive. And this is just the summary, much like Pat was showing the summary slide. Um, there are a lot of components of this. Um, we're now currently in this section right here, right about that line. So you can see there's a lot of design and review of scope work that have happened. Um, we have not quite got into, we have, we've moved this one up and worked on this. There's, there's some still discussion on the school town building designs. Um, I expect I'll get an update probably within two or three weeks um, from the team, again from Joe and Gail primarily that are working on this. John and I, and I will join them to get a better idea of what are the options, what are the budgets, and what do we do? We're not quite there yet. And we do pretty well. Um, how things would play out this summer, especially with turf two being a priority. Um, the owner's project manager, uh, manager, and the consultant have walked through all the buildings again with Joe and Kevin. There's only so many times they can walk through these buildings with these different people, but they've had to do extensive walkthroughs for building security reasons. Well, what about this? What about that? You know, could we do this? Could we do that? Uh, at the same time, there's other work possible for the schools and the town involving wiring. So that's something we'll discuss as part of the budget process this year. <coughs> but while there was the potential of building security work ripping down or ripping holes in walls, we thought, what else would we want to get done that would be on a capital plan that maybe wasn't as urgent to do today, but if we're going to be doing some wiring behind this wall, shouldn't we be doing all the wiring behind the wall? So that's been another thing we hadn't thought of maybe a year ago. And we thought, you know, we really ought to work that out. 
so you can see some preliminary numbers, I think, in next year's budget for that work as well. So it's still at the investigation stage, I guess I'd say. I don't know if anyone has any questions. So I can't say whether we're on budget yet because we're just too far away. Mm -hmm. Ask. <laughs> but for the security piece, I see you're looking at the dispatch piece as being separate piece yeah. for now and first priority. Yeah. But the security piece, you view that as one RFP, huh? Well, we've talked about that, and I guess yeah, we're not 100% sure, yeah. but it's at least one, and it could be more than one. Mm -hmm. If you get a specialty trade, for instance, do you want to wrap it under a GC or do you want to have it stand alone? Mm -hmm. Well, we do have a good OPM, we might have an option to do that. And we're not far enough along to make the decision, but we know there are options that we need to discuss. Are there other communities that you've been able to understand how they've approached? Yeah. I, don't, I don't think anyone's doing this. Are they? Yeah. Not no, in Massachusetts. Not yeah. 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 No, they're doing school at a time. Or building As they're <coughs> in the school. Yeah. yeah, they're not doing a comprehensive. Right. And often it's with a new building or a renovation. It's part of Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Uh, just out of curiosity, with the security consulting um, uh, at the planning phase, uh, life safety, fire safety, are those uh, communicating with each other, or the effects oh, yeah. of one on the other? Sure. No, yeah. no, no, that's all wrapped together. Okay, great. Uh, Joe or Gail, is there anything you want to add? No. Well, the only thing I would, say, I would say, like, we have been, um, we, initially when we had the, the uh, security assessment done, back in 2016 I think it was 16 or 17 16 to 17 which was initially when we threw all the buildings to see where our vulnerabilities we'll call it in the buildings and where, where we're vulnerable at all school and town buildings um, we had an opportunity to sort of just digest that and then take the next step which was to sort of go through and start scoping it out like Bob's talking what we're doing right now is design design documents and we included the um, the contractor uh, TRC that's a security company which I don't know if you've heard of them before but they, they're not going to be bidding on it but we brought them in with us so that we could get their expertise to make sure we were making the right decisions and on that in that working group was not, not just the three of us um, we were reporting to John and to Bob but we also had the uh, um, the, the police department involved the SROs who are familiar with the buildings the consultants so it was a it was a, a collaborative effort to get all this stuff done because you're making big decisions mm -hmm. uh, that impact a lot of people really yeah. okay all right we'll pivot now into the the budget review and and 21 projections so I, don't, I don't know how you handle this. Uh, FinCom has had a discussion about this at other meetings, so I'm not sure how much they want to go over this again. But I know a lot of you folks in the audience haven't been part of that. Um, so maybe I'll just give a couple minute overview. Uh, I think, yeah, err on that side of... Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Um, for the center column, that's FY21, that's next year. It's a little scary when I start seeing these FYs and what they are. <laughs> um, our revenues are projected at 3.3%, and just from a control standpoint, you can be sure the town accountant did all this work, not the town manager. <laughs> um, new growth in FY20 was disappointing. Um, we had budgeted 650,000. We all see what's going on. But when I thought about it and saw the numbers 592, I realized that's as of last January 1st, and a lot of construction actually started to happen this spring. So that's just the way assessing works. It'll come to us eventually. But part of the town meeting uh, budget adjustment for the current year we're in will be to ac account for that $57,000 shortfall in new growth. In talking to our assessor, um, he thinks we're going to be in seven digits of new growth over the next couple of years, so the 750,000 assumption seems to be pretty reasonable. And I, I don't have the numbers in front of me, but our new growth assumptions have always overshot for, I'm going to say, nine out of ten years at least. So this is a, this unusual. I wasn't uh, expecting that. Um, I don't think any of the other revenues are particularly interesting, except maybe once we get to interest earnings. 
Um, Sharon has filed a report with the DOR. Actually, you haven't filed it yet, technically. Okay. Did, Did yeah. Okay. We'll, we'll shortly file uh, a number, and we know that uh, last year's interest earnings were at least a million dollars over budget, and that this year's interest earnings will be some large amount over budget. Um, the trick is, how do we budget for the future? And if you think back over the last two years in terms of interest rates, uh, interest rates have definitely gone up in the short end of the yield curve. So that's a large explanation for it. When interest rates were a quarter of a percent and all of a sudden it goes to one and a half, that's six times higher. So it seems like a little difference, but it is as a percent quite a large difference. Um, our treasurer has also been a little more creative, but very careful in how he invests. Um, there really were not a lot of cash balances that I would say would be temporary. Um, for those that were around during the high school construction, for instance, um, we had a lot of cash on hand that was earning interest, and then the cash was being spent on a project, much like the library project, but a lot of cash. So back then, we knew there'd be a lot of extra interest earnings that would not repeat. This is a lot of extra interest earnings that were not expected. So we think the jump from 450 to 750 is about the most the DOR is going to let us budget. Um, and don't think we'll have a problem hitting that 750. Um, I don't think there's any other revenues really that deserve attention. Uh, state aid is uh, still up in the air. I know uh, Senator Lewis has sent us an estimate of what his bill will do, but I've also seen competing estimates or <coughs> other estimates. And I guess, um, I guess I'll say I'll wait and see. The worst estimate I saw was Reading receiving less than 1% a year for the next six years total and the best estimate is maybe two and a half percent so it's not going to be ten percent it's not going to be a you know a windfall two and a half percent would be fine that's what we assume uh, any, any more would certainly be welcome when we get to the accommodated cost piece uh, you'll see there is some good news in terms of the Senate uh, version and the state budget on that um, to remind FinCom especially the RMLD payment dividend has agreed to be frozen for next year as well uh, I know the selectmen have a, set, a subcommittee working on that. In the future, it, it says up two and a half percent, but obviously we'll change that model as we get more information. Um, this number here, the million and a quarter, we've had a discussion with FinCom over of going up from a million to a million and a quarter. They haven't agreed yet. They're going to discuss that tonight, um, and you'll see why shortly. So again, revenues. Sorry. Um, revenues going up 3.6 percent. The property tax 3.3 is the biggest driver of that, and then interest earnings, uh, you know, are the next driver that drives you slightly higher than 3.3 to 3.4 before you use free cash. On the expense side, uh, a high-level summary first. Um, benefits are up 6 percent, and that's important. The same 5% debt plus capital rule, the reason there's a reduction is because the current year has a higher number shortly. Um, we've had some really good results in our performance contracting. We're able to cut our energy budgets for next year. Um, special ed I'll get to when I just get to the details. Our benefits costs are going up almost 6%. You can see there's really one reason, it's pensions, going up 24%. Um, this has a couple of components. Um, there is an article in front of town meeting that FinCom voted on last week to increase the cost of living. Uh, it's three hundred sixty dollars per retiree, and it actuarially amounts to a certain amount uh, over a long period of time. That's a minor piece of this increase, honestly. Uh, the bigger piece, which is all my fault because I said it was okay, um, is to speed up the payment of this liability. So it's not a cost, a new cost. It's just paying the existing cost faster. Um, and I'll explain why in a moment. Um, the, if you look at the future contributory retirement payments, they add up to be the same as what they used to be. They're just being moved in quicker. So Reading, with this uh, proposal of, of increasing them next year, should be fully funded by FY29. Uh, it is not required to be fully funded that quickly. Um, otherwise, if we did nothing, I think it was FY31. Sorry. 2040. Oh, is it? We have that much time without that. Oh, oh, no, if, if we didn't increase oh, this, it was going to, it's worth about two years. But it's mandated that it be funded by 2040. Okay. 
um, <clears throat> and I'll shortly get to the reason of why. If you see our health insurance line, we're budgeting that flat for next year. We don't have any idea what the increases will be. I have a negotiation scheduled for next week with the PEC, uh, which is all 15 town, light department, and um, school unions. It is a complicated story, um, but I will say that this 0% increase actually uses a 7% underlying number. Um, we met with Maya last week, and he said, uh, use a 5% medical inflation number for next year and a 10% prescription drug number, which for you combines to 7%. So this is 7%. Um, the reason it doesn't look like 7% is because our current year budget did not need as much funds for the second year in a row, because if you'll recall, um, we don't get our final numbers and have a negotiated number until generally after town meeting. Um, and we got very good news. We had really successful negotiation with all the unions. So we know there is a savings in the current health insurance budget for the second year in a row. And as FinCom will see later tonight, we're suggesting to start taking some of that away for pay some of the bills in November town meeting. Uh, because of health insurance, and I think next year, we also probably will have a good year, absent what the actual results in the nation are. I think we have another two-year window and, and going backwards another year of good uh, controlled costs in this area that we could afford to, if you will, speed up the pension payments. So the increase to pensions of what shows to be a million dollars there could have easily been what the health insurance number could have gone up had we not had a good negotiation and we're in a good position. So the way I looked at it was, um, it's another way to save money for the long term. It's, it's like putting money in the rainy day fund. It's a liability you have to, ha you have to pay down, so let's do it, do it a little sooner. Um, I have to admit that when I said this to the retirement board a couple months ago, I expected better new growth, and I thought the operating budget would be a little more flush with cash than it is. And I've also since learned that once the retirement board votes, that's it. So we could beg them to re-vote if, if we really, really wanted to. Um, I always thought town meeting had the last word, and it's not clear. It, it may not be the case. So that's the benefit story in a nutshell. If we remove this increasing the pay of the liability, um, we're looking at a number that's very close to zero. It's really good news in terms of the benefits costs. Again, debt and capital is just following the 5% um, the policy. We're doing a good job in energy. You'll see, uh, except for water and sewer, which the town runs, um, we're doing really well in all the other categories. And again, Joe will give an update to the select board in December on some of the reasons why. And going backwards, we've also had good success. You see generally low numbers, except for water and sewer. And some of that is an increase in the library square footage. Um, but we've had really good performance for quite some time in energy, and honestly, who knows what the future is going to hold. Um, special Ed's the next area. Um, although, um, Transportation and tuition you see are going up by healthy amounts, 7 to 10 percent. The really good news coming out of the state budget process is the uh, circuit breaker or the tuition uh, offset uh, is going up faster than these other costs. So um, I know the schools are pretty comfortable using the million one figure. It could be better. We don't know for sure. So this is still a conservative number. Um, if this good news had not happened, this also would have been a reason we couldn't really afford to do the pension uh, faster this year. So that's, that's another factor. Uh, vocational enrollment has taken a, a dip, uh, especially uh, out of district, out of the Vogue School in Wakefield. Uh, by the way, I did hear about uh, the Wakefield is building a new vocational school. I can't remember the reimbursement, but it's close to 90% because I think Chelsea is 90%. Yeah. So their estimate for a new school today came in somewhere between 165 million and 245 million. Wow. Seemed like a kind of a wide range to me, but that's what's going on with the Vogue School. When we get hit with our portion of cost, and I've made sure of this through several years with several legislators, it is on a per pupil basis. Many of the communities would like it to be pro rata, divided by 12 communities. We have, that would be 8% for us. Um, we have about 1% of the enrollment, so it's, it's a number that when it comes through, it'll come through probably in this line item as just an additional cost uh, for vocational education, even though it's debt. Um, it'll be a number that does not break our budget um, unless our enrollment soars. 
and it's going to be a number that, as I understand it, is decided at the enrollment at one point in time. So it, I don't even think it changes in the future. So again, we'll know in a couple of years. Um, that's, that's really the end of the accommodated cost story also. And when you put it all together, um, our operating budgets can afford to go up a little more than 3% next year. Uh, which is not as good as last year. It's not as good as many years, which is closer to three and a half to three and three quarters percent. Um, neither John nor I have had a chance to really dive into our budget to see what that means. Um, but I, I, you know, I speak for the town side. That that's not a layoff number. Uh, that's a number we can live with. It's maybe there's a few things we won't be able to do. Maybe there's some positions we might have liked to add we won't be able to. It's uh, it's not a difficult number. But that does assume that FinCom is uh, feeling in a generous mood tonight and would help contribute. You know, pensions are going up by a million. We think a couple of areas of the budget we've helped fund that or finance that, but not 100%. So we wouldn't mind uh, being able to go up. Um, I didn't run the number, but if it's less, if it goes back to a million dollars, this definitely drops below 3%. Uh, I think it's around two and, two and three quarters percent. And that might be a little more difficult to manage. So that's that's the quick summary. Thank you. Any questions from anybody on the committee? I know we've seen much of this before, but we're seeing it again. <laughs> and then anybody else here in the room? Any questions for Bob? Keep seeing hands go up back there, but it's in the other room. So. <laughs> Eric, if you don't mind, I, d I do have one question, yeah, Bob. Uh, and just clarification. Um, so this is in conjunction with the space study, right? So we're talking about um, the additional cost of budgeting item and how that, you know, like you said, it's, it doesn't warrant a layoff, but it uh, it's definitely an increase, right? Um, that but we need to put into co concern for the space study, right? So that's increasing enrollment, increasing positions, correct? Yeah, no? I guess there's two parts of the cost. One is the capital cost to acquire more classroom space right. when the reform it comes. And that's projected now to be a November town meeting decision impact beyond now. Right. So if you're asking to hire more staff because there's change, yes, John will have yeah, to handle that. Yeah, if we're adding a general classroom we would need to add another teacher yes right um, the special education space that we need we actually hired the teacher this year okay because um, we knew that we needed the teacher this year we have a smaller space this year which we're going to need a bigger space next year right so the teacher has already been hired okay. for the program so uh, as far as pending November's town meeting that might be something we need to uh, look at as far as operating costs moving forward, right? And the additional position for that one. That would be FY21. Right. Right, right, right. Pending November's town meeting. Right. Okay, great. Thank you. Melissa. Um, Bob, I noticed a slight dip in veteran services. Why is that? I'm losing our veterans. Mm. You know, Kevin's doing a good job um, servicing those that exist, but really they're passing away. And often that numbers a spouse uh, veteran has passed away before and now the spouse has passed away. Um, and knock on wood, they're not making a lot of new veterans. So we had an influx uh, from the second Gulf War uh, at some point, but there haven't been an influx lately. So it is a cost that is definitely on them. So the services are there, but the expenses are the population is just small. And that factors into our the three quarters of the costs are paid a year and later in revenue, so that's also a reduction in future revenue, if you will. You can't always see it because it's part of the part of the state income. Thank you. Yeah. All right. So that brings us to budget guidance. Um, remind me how this works. It's, it's a vote on use of free cash which then results in the in the guidance number right okay. so what we consider is the is the proposed what is it million two five in free cash or any discussion around that number uh, from the committee I know as we've discussed it in previous meetings and you know 
talked about earlier, the, the maximum we have used is two million to balance. And even that was a year we still regenerated more than what we expected to use. So I think that you know, amount of one two fifty is appropriate, and it seems like it's an appropriate increase a lot of the operating, even though it's on the tight side. But hopefully, thing more things come our way between yeah. now and then. Bob, you've you've tied um, you've tied the increase in free cash for 21. Uh, Tied's too strong word, but you've alluded to that being necessary in part because of the increased retirement contributions, um, which you know happened to us to some degree. Um, yeah, um, but in 20, but that that resets the baseline or that adjusts the baseline going forward for the retirement contributions as well. Correct. In the 22 projections, you have us going back to a million dollars of free cash. What's what's your level of confidence that? we're not gonna put ourselves in a position where we're setting a new baseline for free cash? Um, honestly, it's impossible to really answer that question factually. Um, I will say That's that- That's why I asked level of confidence. Yeah. <laughs> um, the menu that the retirement board gave us was a smaller increase in the first year and then larger ones yep. until you're fully funded or a very large increase in the first year and then smaller increases. So it does reset the baseline higher, but then the increases are much more manageable. I think they were above two and a half percent, but not by much. Um, so I think that, again, because of health insurance in the second year out, 2022, um, if that comes in anywhere close to where we're budgeting and state aid is still assumed two and a half percent, then we won't have any problem um, <coughs> absorbing that increase in the second year. Okay. If those are wrong, we might do that. Anything else from anyone? Guess we'll entertain a motion. All right. Well, I think there's a question. Sorry, yeah, yeah, Jeffrey. Yeah. Yeah. Was there a number for how much regeneration happened in FY19? Yeah, not certified. Not certified. It's not completely certified, but it looks healthy to say. Right. Yes. Yes. More. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, we're in a good spot overall, particularly versus our, our policy. So yeah. that's exactly yeah. the question we were it's where are you versus policy, the seven percent policy. That was it forecasting. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. you know, you you know, you don't know the public view yeah. that, so that's why I was asking the question. Yeah. yeah. So that's, that's another reason why that might feel comfortable. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. All right. So this will be a vote, so I'd entertain a motion. I'll make a motion for us to use $1,250,000 of free cash to balance the operating budget for FY21. Second. Further discussion? Vote. All those in favor? I can't see down there. It looks yeah, unanimous. And all the us are here, 9-0. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. So nice to be a full committee. Isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, I was going to take just a, just a few minute break. So um, for those of you that are leaving, thank you for coming, but you're welcome to stay. We're going to, we're going to go through the warrant articles and, and vote as a committee after the break and then just kind of re-examine our schedule here coming up through the budget season in two minutes. So I would say, I mean, uh, five minutes. Let's stay on.
Oh yes, I don't know. I'm kidding. How you doing? Can you guys hear down there if we go to the budget to do the warrant articles now? Yeah. If you can come down here. Yeah. yeah but we'll get the table then. I'll share with you. We we'll get the huddle. <laughs> Do we win this in after <laughs> Are we starting with three? Uh, no, I put it in. the Warren Articles, the first one you ought to vote on is Article 3, which is changing the capital plan. Um, there were a couple changes made from last week. Um, one is your suggestion, one not. We put the uh, facilities HVAC work, the coolage back into the next year, or I'm sorry, into the November plan. 225,000, and then as you heard tonight from Dr. Doherty, 750,000 for uh, solving the next year elementary school space issue. So that combination is $975,000, which is why the FY20 number uh, under Article 3 is over a million seven. It was under a million last week, about 800,000 or so. Nothing else has changed. Um, under FY21, I know you're not interested in a lot of details, but we obviously took the HVAC out of 21 and put it in 20. Um, as you suggested, we moved up the performance contracting initial funding. And we still have a surplus of not quite $300,000, uh, which we can talk about as part of the budget process. Over the um, so there still is some room for doing other work. Um, no changes to water, sewer, or storm water from what we have in the past. So that's Article 3. Um, Chair, do you prefer to go through all of them, or do you want to stop one at a time and decide what? Why don't, why, don't we, why don't we stop one at okay. a time? Particularly, I know some people are going to leave as we go. So, okay. yep. all right. So, some changes from the last discussion. Any any questions from the committee here? Yeah, I mean, it, I think it'd be helpful to hear more about the seven hundred and fifty thousand. Uh, it was alluded to earlier, and I thought you—I thought you said you were going to talk about it more later. No, I said that's tomorrow night. Oh, tomorrow night. I mean, we <laughs> essentially. <laughs> so we need—we need—we're planning on needing three classrooms for next year. Um, so okay. we're looking at. No, no, that's all right. Do I need to? I just got some good news <laughs> for Article Four. <laughs> So we're, we're planning to add three classrooms for next year, uh, and it's for Birch Meadow. Uh, to do that, we're looking at, a, at uh, some different options. We're going to recommend an option tomorrow night that's going to consist of some uh, modular space, modular classroom space, <coughs> and some internal construction. So that's where the 750000 Now, what's different from four or five years ago when we bought purchase modular, classrooms as the square footage cost has gone up. Um, so what was 1.2 million four or five years ago is more expensive for less uh, now. So is that why that you looked at the you know, internal construction cost as a... No, it's going to be a combination of both. Is that why you had that as a combination versus just straight modular? Uh, part of it is uh, trying to put a third modular is would be difficult on the site. Yeah. So that number will get more defined. Just yes, system. probably within the next <coughs> week or two. We'll have a uh, better, definitely by town meeting, but in the next week or two, we'll have a more defined number. Right. That GNAP is working on that right now. Right. And it's on the agenda for the school committee meeting tomorrow. tomorrow. And one thought is, 
and as we're chatting here, I, and I don't know logistically how this would work if we postpone a vote until after it's discussed in more detail with school committee, but I don't know how. Right, go ahead. Yeah. Um, just going to the printer on, uh, I think it's Monday. Okay. So you have to vote. If you want something in print for town meeting, it has to be this week. Um, you have lots of options. You can cross the 750 out and vote without it. Um, you can vote with the 750 in with you understanding the number may change. Um, it, I mean, it's your choice, but it's to me it's more transparent to leave the 750 there mm -hmm. and have some explanation, which I'm happy to write up just a couple sentences. The number's you know, tentative number. It's going to be discussed at the school committee. Um, rather than have nothing and then have it suddenly appear as a discussion at town meeting. That's it's much more polite, I think, to let town meeting go. What if you put a range in like 750 to 1 million? I, I could certainly write in the background anything that you want. They have to vote a number, whatever number is comfortable. But we're voting on something before school committee has approved. If you want to have that vote include this figure and be in print. Yeah, I hear you. I hear or you could, well, it's too late, you can't post it tomorrow. Right, I know I'm with you. Yeah. The, uh, one one question. I know last time we went through the the modular discussion, one of the things was code upgrades that came along with it. Has that been factored into whatever numbers you're working on? There were code upgrades. I think because you you they had to be detached from the school. They couldn't yeah, be attached. Like all the code upgrades. If you attach to a school, remember yeah, that whole thing. So yes. it will follow the same rules. Yes. So that's they, already they been considered. Yeah. Have to be detached. All right, because I remember that was one of the things yes. that came up last that's minute last time. Safety. Sorry. Yeah, fire safety, Purpose. all that stuff. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, the, the discussion is not a new discussion. They have have been bringing it up for for some time as far as the modulars in the third the third classroom needing to be within the school. Um, because there is no space over there, um, unless you're following the, the school committee meeting, uh, the minutes um, it can be difficult to, to follow along. But um, right now, it's a projected budget; it doesn't necessarily mean it's a hard number. But putting something in there to get the town to understand that something might happen would be a smart, would maybe a smart idea. Yeah. I agree, and I'd yes. rather fine tune later. We've sometimes voted right before town meeting if the number is much different I'd much rather put something out there as yep. an estimate and to the extent we're advisory town meeting I mean and it, this can't be a surprise right. well <laughs> this shouldn't be a surprise right. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I'm not I mean if you know if we choose to vote I'll cast a vote I'm not terribly comfortable voting on this before school committees reviewed it because there are I would assume there are paths to not needing three new classrooms next year. They're not palatable or not, you know, no, nobody's going to be excited about those. But um, I think, I think, I would assume there are, are paths to not needing three new classrooms next year. Um, so I personally, I'd like to have the school committee have, you know, have their discussion before we vote it, you know, which we could, I think we have, a, I know it wouldn't be in time for print, but. I think we tentatively have a meeting scheduled for the first week of November before town meeting, or we could do it the day of town meeting. You know, there's paths there, but for me, it's less about the fact that the number is a little bit uncertain and more about the fact that the school committee just hasn't had the discussion yet. Um, I can't remember the exact issue, but FinCom has faced this before, and I don't remember if it's a town or school issue, but um, FinCom chose to divide something into two parts and cast two votes. So you could vote on the 750 by itself and then the rest of it if that makes you more comfortable. I don't know if that solves your problem. That has been done in the past. What happens if at school committee to John's point we they say we don't want new classrooms, no money's gonna be spent, you know, again. Well, well yeah. Then well, what happens to this? It just gets dropped. Well, one would assume it gets changed at town meeting. Okay. Yeah. So no harm. Right, we use no harm, right. Before. So no harm in right. mm -hmm. and having that's I just want to okay. air that out for a second. Yeah, my only thinking is, you know, where people pick up their warrants and then what they see in print is, is more relevant. And that's why I know it's a weird position to be in before they've even discussed it, but it, it feels more transparent to put it out there in print for people's warrants. But which part is it you're concerned? I'm not, I'm not suggesting we not include the line item. Oh, I gotcha. I'm just, I'm suggesting maybe we withhold our vote. Oh, I gotcha. And so the only thing yeah. that wouldn't be in print would be 
I Fincom know. voted, you know, nine zero or whatever to, to support this article. Who would have said the warrant? Yeah, yeah. 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 whatever you wanted to say. It's your report, right? But so just so if the 750 is is the issue that's kind of sticking here, that's Article 3 and 4. It's not just this one. And so town meeting will have no advice from you at all on either article except on the floor. That's why I suggested that you have any past vital questions, so at least town meeting has some sense of what you think on the rest of it. That, that resonates with me, and to the extent that our primary function is to be advisory to town meeting, right? And I, I think that is true on the floor and in print as well. Um, so, for me, it feels like we either divide them or, or we vote. That's, that's my position. Yeah, because Article 4 directly affects the capital expenses, which is reflected from Article 3 and carried over. Um, is it acceptable to, we have a county email list now, is it acceptable for us to take over on November 4th and email it to everybody? Sure. Yep. So that they, they get it before they, way before they want it. Um, I think by the 4th, they should have their warrant books in hand. Let's say they'll be available. They have to be available. It doesn't mean that we pick them up. And there's not a simple way to beat that day. Except to post, post a meeting in late October, I guess. I don't know if But certainly, you can send an email to town meeting anytime. They're not subject to open meeting laws. You can send them tonight. Yeah, whoever has the list. Right, you know how you usually have printed copies, like the right. things that didn't make it, you can start using the email, and then we don't have to surprise them at the last minute. Yeah. I, I, it feels funny to recommend this project mm -hmm. that hasn't been presented yet. So I, I'm open to dividing that whole lot of project. I can't see that I can like, recommend this project. I like think about it. And it's still kind of nice. All right, so we've moved the numbers as is, but hold off our vote. Is that right? No, absolutely. If we divide it, what's it look like? Just it's it's two votes on the article. Yeah. Right. The one the line. I think I'd put an asterisk next to the 750 okay. and explain below the two votes. Mm -hmm. So the warrant would say. Fincom has voted such and such on the seven hundred fifty thousand dollar request. And then FinCom has voted such and such on the remainder of um, Article 3. Where we would say FinCom has voted such and such on the on the, the article, the remainder of the article, but yeah. no vote at time of print or, or um, if, if you want to on vote, the 750. Yeah, you don't have or to vote, vote on the 750. Yeah, you can just say FinCom cast a whatever vote on everything except the 750,000. That's certainly. Yeah. Probably a more dramatic way to say yeah, 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 yeah. I think the only reason to split it is if we're going to withhold a vote on the 750. Right. I mean, I guess theoretically somebody could vote for one and not the other, but. Yeah. Right. My gut is that's unlikely to be a majority of people that go that path. So, um, I think we would be withholding the vote on the 750. Right. Would be the yeah. 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 So those are, those are the two options before us: vote on the article as is, or or or, or vote. Would, so it would be a motion to vote on the article as is, or a motion to vote on the article absent the 750. Right. That makes sense. Bob, um, just as a point of clarification in that withholding, do you want? Is it does it make sense to say withholding the vote until the school committee? Yeah. Yeah, that's specifically it, it, saying that's that's you're not withholding yeah. the vote yep. yeah. And, yeah. until the school committee reviews and, and votes themselves. Yeah, I would right action pending. Sorry, action pending is what I would say. Yeah, yeah I, I would write up something like FinCom voted such and such on this article with the exception of the $750,000 item. They will you know, consider a vote on that after the school committee has taken action. So yeah, clearly you need to explain that. And we have a meeting to do that November 4th. November 4th, we have a meeting. We could even do it the night of, but we do have a meeting November 4th. Mm -hmm. Right, but that, that won't get in print. Both. Correct. It won't be in the warrant report that goes to town. I think that's Karen Michigan. I think we're supposed to also put it in print that night and make whatever, you know, 100 copies. Right. 
Okay. So do you want to do, uh, that, would there be an option to do a subordinate uh, upon meeting prior to them the level before so it can be in print? I don't even know. It would be tomorrow. So we can't post. Yeah. Friday. We can do Friday. Could you put the warrant for 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 the warrant that we are going to vote at. You know, so yes, you know, so pending you action say, of the 11th floor. Yeah, you know, like, you know, like, yeah, because you couldn't, yeah. Take a vote, just get On November 4th. Do the printing it's November deadline. 6th, right? It is November 6th. Okay, okay. Oh, we want to make sure I'm not going crazy here. All right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's November yeah. 6th. I said I left my phone at home. I'm in trouble with the yeah. calendar. Yeah. Yeah. So, just a question. So, um, from the school committee uh, meeting, is it just tomorrow night we'll, we'll, we'll fine tune that that piece of it, or is it going to be followed on from that? I, mean, I don't know what you, your expectation. Well, the plan as we sit here is to deal with it tomorrow night. But gotcha. you know, okay. I, you know, who knows if, yeah. if members require more information or, or whatever, then we won't vote until everyone's satisfied. With, with whatever their position is. And I'm hoping that's tomorrow night. So does that put a wrench into us actually naming a date then? Yeah. I mean, so again. So it gets punted, you know, and then is that Maybe we can couch that in the language, right? Just right. Pending, uh, pending activity it's targeting on October 28th. Okay. So I'm assuming. All right. If not tomorrow night, it would so two meetings before. Yeah. Join. All right. So in the school committee meeting, you'll be Somebody discussing the need for it. And the dollar amount, but that dollar amount, do you see that likely changing between now and town meeting? Probably, it would only change it through consensus. We came up with a, a different idea. And oh, it. okay. And Not with the same idea. To, well, we don't have the yeah. final numbers from the architect yet yeah. for what we're going to be proposing. Okay. So the amount we put in there right now is best against mm -hmm. right now. So the number itself may change even if the plan stayed the same. And we'll know that in a week or two. Okay. That's there about that idea you. we could post uh, the school mm -hmm. committee meeting and vote. I think we can put the right words around it. Yeah. 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 Sorry, we could we could post to the school attend, attend their meeting. Attend their meeting in the twenty eighth. Yeah. Yeah, but it sounds like odds are they're not gonna be discussing it on the twenty eighth. I mean, the intent is to address it, is to tackle it tomorrow, right? Well, yeah, but if we held off until the 28th, could it still get in the warrant here? It, it's not going to matter. Um, what they're suggesting tonight, we can't solve tomorrow night. We yeah. cannot. Um, you know, it's too late. I just mentioned a mark uh, Friday at 9 if they want to meet. That's what <laughs> been Sean Day and see we would stick with tomorrow yeah. night. Yeah. yeah. Wouldn't it? Even if we attend on the 28th, though, that's too late for the plan. Yeah, right. Yes. Yeah, so he's yeah, right. Right. Yeah, so I guess that's right. But, but you, you know, sure. the question to John is, you know, will the school committee tomorrow night be built, or will they be voting on the approach or a number? Yeah, I was going to say, if you don't have the estimates, how do you vote on the number? Vote on the estimates. Yeah. Okay. Same, same approach. The okay. goal would be to inform them, present the figures as we have them, and have them vote on the figures as we know them with updates to be provided as they become available. Okay. I mean, we're in, oh, sure. we can sure. do the, um, you know, the, the substance of the presentation tomorrow night is wait to vote until the 28th if you want to vote. It's not right a matter of us, so yeah, you're right. well, it's up to you guys. Yeah. Yeah. I think there's enough work. I'm not concerned about town meeting, not understanding where we're coming from, yeah. whether it's in print or not at this point, as long as then as long as it's showing in the the yeah. request. Yeah, I think given the path they're suggesting that, you know, there's no hurry for school committee to vote, but doing it by the twenty eighth would certainly be good and helpful for them to then advise town meeting. That our vote on November sixth. Mm -hmm. Or you know, attend their meeting. Or attend their meeting. Yeah. I mean we've already Establish an agenda for the 28th, so or, or a draft of one, so yeah. it's better to stick to the plan than yeah. this tomorrow night. Okay. So that's what we split. 
Yeah, and, and like I talked about last time, to the extent we're standing up and advising, you know, we, you know articulating our vote, we'd like to, where possible, kind of give some ex more more color there, uh, explanation as to where we're coming from, and we could easily address this there as well. I think Karen's suggestion that maybe you can take, you know, take the point on, not to volunteer you for something, but uh, <laughs> just as chair, uh, <laughs> to say, you know, we, we voted, so we voted, so it's a meeting to have that back pocket. It's a good but idea. I think that's a good suggestion. All right. So then okay. So do you have another question, Andrew? Nope. No. Okay. Would entertain a motion then. <laughs> a motion for what? I'll what? make a motion to <laughs> accept. Correct me if I say it wrong. Um, to recommend. Recommend Article Three is written minus the seven fifty that we will take a later action on. And yeah. All right, further discussion on that? All those in favor? Unanimous 9 0. Article 4. The only changes since last year are the capital line, but I did just get uh, some pleasant news. If you look at H92, the Lakeview project. Um, the, de the developer owed us 20000 but hadn't paid yet, but they paid tonight. So we can strike that 20000 from this motion. <laughs> well, yeah, that's a good point. It's a gold check. <laughs> it's a rubber check. Um, this was going to be funded by the um, permits revolving fund, so it doesn't really affect the use of free tax. Um, I will strike that first line for 20000 change the 60 to 40, and likewise change the source of funds down below and remove the permits for wall and um, Again, the only change except from what I just described was the capital number from my last week. Sorry, where's the change in the source? It's on the second page. It's on the oh, page. there is the change, okay. That 892 cross out that first yep. 20,000. Yep. So then it comes out of from permits so row. Source of funds just removed the 20,000 that was going to be used for the permits row. So the total. So the net, so the net use the of same. free cash, again, in, including that 750 is <coughs> one. But if you want to strike that from this motion also, then just make the same kind of motion. Because this uh, capital number has 750,000 in it. Yep. The enterprise funds did not change. Could our report be something like? <coughs> We recommend we recommend this article pending a full recommendation of Article Three. Recommend this article with the twenty thousand dollar adjustment. I think at this point the best way for, for us to do this is for me to rewrite three and four without the seven fifty, so it's very clear what town meeting is being presented that you voted on, and then to very carefully in a footnote explain there's another seven hundred fifty thousand. That pending school committee approval and FinCom approval is expected to be added to Articles 3. Got it. Because if we start doing asterisks and leaving yep. it there, yep. and someone's going to add it up mm. and say you didn't add it up right. Yep. Sure. That makes sense. Yeah, as long as it's right. That that's my bigger concern is that it's very clearly out clear. that the 750 is clearly out there. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Motion to be postponed that to the 28th meeting. I think you make the same kind of motion call made on three. Uh, excluding the 750,000 in capital. And excluding the 20. Yeah. <laughs> I'm telling you right now with the cross cuts, you don't have to vote on that part. They are cross cuts. Right. Okay. Okay. You don't have to explain that. Okay. All right. Any more questions or discussion here? Or Matt would entertain a motion. Well, I think Paulie Paulie's doing a great job doing this. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I recommend we approve Article 4 with the $20,000 strikes we discussed. No, that's not. You don't even okay, okay, fine. <laughs> <laughs> Except Article 4 is written with the exception of the $750,000 that we will take further action on at a future date. Second. Further discussion? All those in favor? 
unanimous 9-0. What we didn't do for Article yeah, 3 was determine uh, who's going to... Um, I can take Article 3. I'd like to stand up and talk about that. Are you taking this, Jackie, or whoever needs it? I'll take Article 3 at town meeting. Yeah. And then Paula's got Article 4. Article 5, there is a small bill outstanding from Verizon. Um, you'll see uh, some of the articles from here forward have supposed from the select board last night. So they took action on some of the articles, not all the articles. Mm -hmm. Tonight they voted 3 0 for Article 3 and 4. Article 5? I'll recommend any discussion on it. Five's pretty straightforward. I'll make the check myself. Yeah, please. On 3 and 4, the select board did vote as is the consent They did, and I want to be careful what I say. If they had heard this discussion, they might have agreed. Motion for Paula to pay our outstanding Verizon. <laughs> <laughs> Second. Anyone? Anyone? <laughs> Second. <laughs> okay. Motion to recommend Article Five to town meeting. Twenty-one bucks each. <laughs> Do I hear a second? Second. Second. Thank you, Andrew. Further discussion. All those in favor? Nine zero unanimous. Bob, you can take it as a payroll dedu deduction from us. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Mark will take this. Okay, you can skip uh, six and seven. Um, eight is uh, missing them. Two bad Oh, just right. Yeah. Where did we align on that instructional motion? We're going to we inform town meeting that we're going to. part of this. Is part of for your report in this that you were going to. Okay. To respond and remind it. You know, this was an instructional motion. Okay. So as we assign this, keep that in mind. Yeah. 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 The text you see in the back on the last paragraph mm -hmm. just reminds everyone about the instructional motion. Yeah. You just report on it. Right, anyway, okay. Yep. Yeah. Any questions on Article 8? Motion accept Article 8 is written. Second. Second, Karen. All those in uh, further discussion? All those in favor? 9 0 unanimous. Eric, I'll take the report on this one. Sean's got Article 8. Yeah, there's a whole bunch of that one. <laughs> Article 9. Article 9 is the polar increase that you've heard about. Oh, that's right. You already voted. Oh, we did. Yeah. 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 Of course, of course, of course we did. Take it, although, I mean, you're going to be there. I think I have that girl. Am I allowed to even say anything about town meeting? Yeah. Yeah, you got the approval by the select board. Of I thought you told It's lifetime. I haven't asked for approval, so I'm not talking. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I'll be there. So, I mean, if I have to say anything, I will, but I won't be presenting it to the chairman. Okay. The chairman of the chairman. Okay. Sean. Oh, good. All right, so. Sorry, just to clarify, I was thinking earlier, thank God, we, not thank God, but we only have one, only one Mark on the committee now, but no, we have two Sean's. <laughs> yes. So, you spelled the same so no. Article 8 is Sean I with a the W, right Sean Brandt, <laughs> and <laughs> Article oh, yeah, I just spelled him. <laughs> Article 9 is Sean, S-E-A-N, Jacobs. All right, Article uh, 10. That's the um, monitoring agent being able to extend the contract yeah. beyond three years. Yeah. Uh, yeah questions. Any questions from anybody on this? Have a motion. Motion to accept Article 10 as written. Second. Further discussion. All those in favor. Nine zero units. 
did make a few comments in Article 11 last time. Sorry, Bob. Uh, Article 10. Oh, sorry. Who, who, who wants to take the report? Oh, sorry, Karen yeah. has Article 10. Sorry, Bob. Sorry, I'm sorry. Article 11. Um, if we were uh, signing a contract tonight, it would not be longer than three years based on the market condition. Mm -hmm. But I think this is still a useful tool to have because who knows what's going to happen between now and June. Did we recently move this? That like a couple of years ago? A couple of years ago, we missed two pieces of rubbish. Yeah. We did the uh, collection. Okay. We, we did get, I think, 10 year authorization. Maybe it was even a 10 plus. A yeah, I remember that. Yeah. Town meeting. What did we sign? A five and a five? Four and a five. For, the, for the, the current one for collection. 10. 10, okay. And there's six or seven years left? Uh, yeah, 2016. So. Okay, 26. So, yeah. And then this is the other piece of the budget. They're about half each. Okay. <coughs> This one expires next June, and this one, the market is not very great. Mm -hmm. But I, again, it's it's a tool that was very helpful last time. The ten-year contract that Jane was able to get last time is very worthwhile in today's market for the collection. Piece. We still have the six years of benefit. Right, and each unique contract you have to in yeah. vote independently. Yeah. Yeah. Second. Second. Further discussion? All those in favor? 9 0 unanimous. Who would like it? That's Andrew. Thank you. Well, this the senior tax relief. Again, the only change from the current one is uh, locking the number at 150%. Current uh, language as the select board annually deciding between 50% and 200% for Schedule CB. And this would remove any flexibility in the discussion and just leave it at 150%. And the select board reaches the discussions. Okay. So, what prompted the first year they voted for 200% with a lot of spirited debate? And I forget it was a split vote. Um, and one of the cautions at the time uh, was. If you give too much tax relief, you might make some people disqualified for the next year. And we can't be 100% sure how many, but that definitely happened. Oh. So someone mm -hmm. got a 200% benefit, which is clearly better than they would have. But then the next year, they got no That's benefit right. at all from the state or local. So mm -hmm. they were just out for a year. And then they're back on the year after. So this 150% is thought to remove that problem that was caused. Mm -hmm. And based on, we didn't know, I mean, this is all completely new stuff. We yeah. had no real way to know what would happen. Um, we had estimated a figure as high as, I remember, 600 and something thousand, if everyone that we thought might participate did. And again, our IRS data was poor. Um, the actual number came in much less. So the 50% and the 100%, well, the 50% especially was in case too many people applied. So that clearly was not happening in the first three years. So there was no need for that. And then if the 200 went away, the 100 went away, the 150 was kind of less than the So do you think less people qualify on a state level, or people don't apply? Well, they did for that one year where the tax relief was large. The formula, the form CB is a little complicated, but it's what percent did you spend on property taxes, and there's some formula about how much water and sewer you factor in as well. So the tax relief you get has a huge impact on your qualification for um, Schedule CB at the mass tax level, mass state tax level. When you lost that el eligibility, you became ineligible for the local program as well, because that was one of the qualifications. Right, exactly, because we modeled it after the state. Right. So a, a handful of people, I don't think it was an enormous number, but a handful did not qualify the second year because of that. Right, but do we think most people who qualify for the state program for applying? Um, that's really difficult to know. Um, okay. I forget the numbers, but Victor did present um, in the second year and the third year. The numbers have grown a little bit, but some of that is people dropping off and not qualifying. And some of that is because they may have changed their uh, ownership of the house. It's now in a trust. Mm -hmm. And then 
clearly there has been a couple of uh, a group of people added over the last two years. There's no way to know from a marketing standpoint. The first year was definitely, we did the best we could. The second year, there were, there were definitely more awareness. Mm -hmm. um, it's done the Vic Rubber Chicken Circuit at the Senior Center several times. And it's a word of mouth thing. Um, the first year, you know, we did the best we could. The best marketing was, oh, you didn't get it? I did. Mm -hmm. So the second year was much better participation. Not a huge amount, like another 20 or 25 people, but it was worthwhile. Um, yeah. Right, because you don't you know, know how many people qualify this. Right, to we, you know, program. given the same population that qualified, except for the money, you know, is there a reason more are going to qualify next year? Maybe if their income drops <coughs> enough to qualify for CV to begin with. So, but otherwise, it shouldn't be a number that jumps all over the place. Mm -hmm. And Wakefield, his other town, um, when they were thinking of filing this home loan petition, and honestly, I, I think they filed that, I don't think it's passed. Um, they fixed it at 100 or 100 percent. I'm not sure, but they didn't want that choice, mm -hmm. so they picked either 100 or 150 percent. But just that's what. We want. And again, as a reminder, the the current program we have will expire, so this is necessary to continue. Thank Make it's worked really well. Uh, yeah. So. Make a motion to accept Article 12 as written. Second. Second. <laughs> Further discussion. All those in favor? Nine zero unanimous. <coughs> Someone want to report on Article Eleven? Our last one. Ed, thank you. That, sorry, that was Article Twelve. Um, the additional information from what you asked me about last week was last night the select board did vote for the chair of the support this article. I just have one question. I can't remember if you had the background last week. Yeah. Right. I don't think we, I don't did. Think we did. No, it was okay. There's no, there's no way to have the gas company pay for this. <laughs> I know it sounds funny, but it's their issue, not right, ours. At the end of the day, and I, I agree the safety. I, I think if they, the answer is no, then there's a safety issue we got to deal with. But the reason you don't want them to is because you want an independent yeah. assessment. Right. Okay, fair yeah. enough. But they won't pay for an independent. You're saying it's not independent if they pay our independent assessor. It's going to be a political answer. Right. And it's also proactive. Essentially, it's acting as a quality control to existing. Yeah. And you'll see sure. in the background, um, Andy Friedman went to a regional meeting recently on the first day. There's not a lot of explanation in this document, and, and I don't think they asked to be, but there could potentially be a phase two. And again, that's depending on what you find in phase one. There may be a phase two. I don't know what it involves. I don't know if it involves town money, but at the regional level, they are discussing. Because I don't think anyone's passed phase one yet, but they are discussing. If we find problems, how do we encourage them to fix them? Mm -hmm. So most towns are doing this independently. I would say There's some. 20 plus some. town cooperative initiative. Yeah. No, we're not rolling. So, I guess my question is, is, um, oh, it, is there metrics to you kind of go over the, I think this was brought up um, last meeting, about the metrics to how we, how we determine um, how successful this third party is going to be and who determines which third party is most successful, right? So, every person out there is going to be a salesman for their own company. Um, the, what the history or background do we have to the third party benefiting whatever town that they're in to do it? Number one, and number two, um, that you know those towns, what companies did they? What a, what is the third party that they used? And is there any trending report between companies? Right. So if twenty towns use twenty different people, twenty different people could have twenty different results. Um, and you know that that'd be my only question to this would be. Uh, <clears throat> Being proactive is great, but saying that there might be things to 
it might be phase three. three. Where's the quality control aspect? Right, right. At, at what point do we say, you know, do we kick that can down the road and say, all right, we do it, maybe nothing happens, maybe it's a few things that National Grid already knew about. Or maybe they say, okay, this is amber, this should be red. And they fix it, and that's great. Um, maybe nothing happens at all. And you say, all right, we have to do it again. It's a big town, it takes a long time to do it, and right, we have to do it again. So um, at what point does it turn into a one-time thing and then turn into an operating budget is my, my concern, right? Um, that, that, that would be my question. I don't know if anyone has. Yeah, it's a great, it's a really big concern for the gas infrastructure in this town is so bad that this becomes an operating budget thing. That's a whole other issue. That's, right. that's a really great, you know. Right. Hmm? Right. Yeah, I look at this to establish the baseline. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. Jane, do you want to take over gas also, like Wakefield? <laughs> no. Bob, <laughs> well, did you say there was a couple of other communities actively doing this right now? Lexington and Andover, I recall. I remember hearing Lexington. Uh, David Zeke is here from the Climate Committee. He may be able to. Much yeah. I know. You know. There are a bunch of maybe a bunch of towns that have done this, and that uh, Weston's done this, uh, Salem has done some of it, Wellesley has done some of it, Boston's done some of it, Cambridge has done it. But, um, it's been done on behalf of the Emerald Necklace Conservancy in Brookline. There's been a, a bunch of them that have done. It. So and have they been effective to get change? They. It's yes, this they have because because of the publicity that they raise, it's it's, it's tied in with the general community interest in, and publicity about around gas leaks, and it provides the communities with um, you know data to, to play with to, to, to take back to national grid. In our case, um, I think it's uh, different communities have done different things with the data. Bob mentioned the phase, the first phase, the second phase, and so on and so forth. Different, different towns have done different things. Weston did a complete survey of all their gas leaks, came up with a lot more gas leaks than National Grid did, came up with a lot more high volume gas leaks. Um, they also did a survey of their trees. They found 300 trees to be endangered by gas leaks. Um, Salem did something very similar, but they did a statistical analysis. They didn't do that level of survey. Wellesley did, um, they didn't do this, the, a, a detailed, um, inventory of the gas leaks, but what they did do was to go out and buy their own combustible gas analyzer, which they used to test sites where they're about to plant trees. So um, in the case of Brookline, they sued um, National Grid over um, a destruction of a bunch of trees in the Emerald Necklace and, and won that suit. So you know, different towns have done different things, and that's why I think it's important to, to break it up. I don't think we necessarily want to sign up on day one for like, any particular whole package, but to see where we have, uh, you know, issues. And, and, the, and what the first phase detects is just methane in the air uh, by location. It's just a drive around survey that, that looks for, for surges in, in methane emissions. And then from that, we can decide whether we have emissions near schools, emissions that are clumped, you know, emissions that are clumped, whether um, our trees are in areas that, that have high emissions and things like that, we can decide what to do next. And I think this this particular article has $35,000 associated with. I think we spend as much of that as we think makes sense, and I would like to propose that. I, I think I hope the background mentions that that, that we that we get a few people from the community, you know, the, the fire DPW, you know, people that that um, would have a vested interest in there to decide where to go from after the first phase, you know, what, what's most important. How much did Brookline spend? I, I, Any idea? Spent on, I don't know how much they spent on it. I, 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 know, I know that Weston spent 32,000, uh, 32,500, but Brookline had um, over 300 uh, gas leaks. Bob, is there anything we can do? Oh, sorry. I cut somebody off. Is there anything we can do from a contracting perspective? I, I think embedded, Andrew, in your comment was, you know, is, if we're defining this as a phase one, are we going to create core incentives for a contractor to, 
you know, to find more gas leaks than they might otherwise find. Is there anything we can do from a contracting perspective, you know, precluding the contractor who accepts, you know, accepts this job from participating in the next phase? You know, anything you would think of that we would do there to guard yeah, against I that? Think, I think a key to this article, um, I've been working with uh, Andy and Vanessa at, at a distance with town council and kind of watching the three of them go at it. Um, I think the actual wording of the motion on the floor will be very important for this one. Um, the article is written in, you know, the article in the background are both informative, but the, the key to what the contract should look like is whatever language the motion itself says. Um, this is a pretty technical area. So yeah. just as an example, and Dave certainly feel free to chime in. You, you don't detect gas. You detect too much gas where there shouldn't be gas. So that's right. a technicality. Right. But if you actually said to discover gas leaks, that's probably not the wording you want to use in a motion. So that's my expertise probably right around there. And just say the word careful and the contract discussion has to be very careful. I think from other work we do, um, for instance, the building security, and the owner's project manager, we hire independent people, and there aren't always a lot of them, that absolutely have no vested interest other than doing the best work for the town. Right. There's no follow-on, there's no sister company, or any of that stuff. So that would be my expectation. But I don't know the field. I really don't. All right, so who will help us with that? I'm just saying, does um, this um, fire chief have, I mean, do, you, do they I, have I don't that? know if that gets in the motion, probably not. Um, you know, it depends where the money wants to, wants to go. It's. It kind of has to be under me on the spending authority, um, but I'd obviously work with whoever you know, has expertise. Dave clearly is one of them. The Latin committee broadly is one. Um, I would probably uh, call up some of the other communities before we actually sign the contract and just get some advice. Mm -hmm. And town council uh, knows National Grid very well. I'll just leave it there. Uh, not as a friendly. Oh, he's, he's been involved in other communities on the other side. He knows the issue really well. But so is, the concern, okay. is the concern that they're going to find, again, 300 leaks, but of those 300, only 50 are really what we should be concerned with? I mean, I don't know. Well, is that twofold my, my concern with this? Around yeah. Is, um, is, like I said, that they could keep, um, I don't want to say, uh, so this is going to be QAQC to National Grid is essentially what it is, right? Um, and this is QAQC to the, to the consultant, right? And it is kind of what I'm getting at. Um, and it, we're essentially, if I correct me if I'm wrong, the article is asking for an allocation of funds based upon that 35 as an estimate, I'm assuming? Yeah, that, that has an actual um, estimate. Um, that allocation of funds to investigate methane levels or access methane levels within the town of Brandon, um, without a definitive scope as to where, how, or how, right? I would suppose that's the best motion, is to be prepared so that experts like David can sit down and say, this is what we want to do. And okay. then depending on what you go through as a process, you might then learn something and change it. Yes. So you don't want a motion to be very constrictive, I think it's said. The first phase is to drive around. It drives the streets of Reading with a methane detector and it takes measurements uh, once a second and signs a GPS location to the data. I mean, like, you know, Salem did this and it was 79,000 data points. So there's a data reduction exercise that goes on there. But that tells you when you get a, a, a methane spike, e either either you're, you have a, a leak there on the, like, on the road, which many of them would be, or you are, or you have a really big leak that's that's farther away. I mean, if, if you have a leak that's on private property, you might be, you know, 50 feet from a leak and still pick it up on the street, but you, but you wouldn't know. I mean, you wouldn't know just from that data point that it was actually well, how close you were to the leak. So there's some there's some data analysis that has to go on there. That that part of it's not very expensive. That part of it's under five thousand dollars. Oh. Um, if you don't mind me asking my question, David, I assume that um, the methods we end up using need to be acceptable to DPU, because they're the authority that would tell the National Grid, you know, here's a scientifically found piece of evidence, go fix it. Is that accurate? <coughs> DPU doesn't have anything to do with this drive around methane. No, but, thing, but, the, but the methodology used has to be acceptable to DPU. 
as a, as the no. regulatory body. No, no. There's um, the DPU doesn't doesn't speak to what a town might do in, in this way. Um, there but, but the types of grades, the three types of grades on the leaks. Yes, they are the regulatory authority over. Which they define. They define what that is. So right. if we if we find a leak and we and we would uh, we would have we would have to tell National Grid that they have a leak here, okay. and they would have to come out and validate oh. the leak, and they would have to assign the, the grade themselves. Okay. So we, you. we you know our, our saying that we have a dangerous leak is, is is interesting, but it's kind of like when the fire department you know answers a. a an odor complaint or something they go right. out and they, and they and they have to tell okay. they say yeah there's right. gas here helpful. we're going to we're going to tell national grid so so no the the dpu's regulations specifically apply to gas companies or people who distribute gas okay. so it doesn't apply to us that's very helpful thank you 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 thank this is kind of a no-brainer. It's a small dollar amount. I trust that Bob, you and town council will figure out how to get the technical details right, and make sure we're engaging with the right parties for this. Um, it's kind of where I land on this. Yeah. Nothing else. Motion. Motion to recommend Article 17. Second. All those in favor. Did you vote? Opposed. You're oh, sorry. All those opposed. Uh, eight one. Motion carries. Sorry, just couldn't see you there. All right. That was yeah. Who would like to take that one? I'll take it. Karen. Is that it? Yeah. All right. Schedule update. I can bring it so that's easy. Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. yeah, I, I just want to let the committee know that the select board had four budget meetings on the calendar for December the first, Tuesday, Wednesday, the second Tuesday, Wednesday. Um, that first Tuesday is now has other business on it, so there will, will not be a budget meeting. So I just want to make sure you didn't attend for the reason of the budget. Um, we, have, we plan four nights. We usually need three. The override, we needed a little more the override here. Um, we had expected to cancel a fourth night, but this just rearranges the schedule, uses the first one for something they need to take care of, and then spreads out uh, over those nights. So. If there's anything different from that, I'll make sure to include all of him so that you know what it means. And I, I have not uh, talked to John about this, but he has published a budget schedule. I don't think it's changed from uh, when we last put it out online. I'll double check on that also. Are you having a meeting in December? There's some discussion have a public hearing of some sort in December. There right. is a meeting scheduled the third week of December. Okay. Um, I'll, I'll check with you. I'll pull it up right now and tell you what we have on schedule. Okay, thanks. Pre-budget presentation. On the 19th. December 19th is quarterly, quarterly personnel and quarterly finance right now. Okay. Um, and then pre-budget presentation and special education presentation. Yeah. Otherwise, we have. I'm sorry. Can you say the second part? Uh, FY21 pre-budget presentation. Yeah. What am I saying? And special education presentation. That's on the 19th. The 19th of December, right now. Yeah. And Gene just handily had your schedule, and that's why that's on your calendar. So the only change would be to cross out December 3rd as a budget. Um, the board. Your November 6th meeting was at, if needed, but um, RMLD does plan to attend that night and give the presentation you asked for, so that we, you will plan to meet on November 6th. And just, sorry, Bob, if I could interject there. Um, yeah. So we've asked RMLD to come in and they'll, they'll provide a kind of a, just an overview of their, their finances and their operations um, and their programs. Um, if there are any specific questions that you guys have that you would like asked, I'd, I'd, I'd ask that maybe you send those to me and I can collect them and, and give them, send them over to Colleen and give her adequate time to, 
to respond. So maybe 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 if I ask that by end of this. Uh, I just remember going to count. Probably next week. Yeah. Next in the next week. In the next week. Yeah. So that's all. Then that gives her. So by the 25th, that gives her a week plus to respond. So by uh, October 25th, if you wouldn't mind saying those over. Thank you. Sorry, Bob. Dinner. That's all. Then we're going to get a copy of the minutes of the. Karen, do you go to the RMLD meeting? There's one tomorrow night. Yeah. There's one tomorrow night? Yeah. Uh, yeah their minutes are online, but I honestly have to say are. I haven't looked in a while. Um, I'll send you all of them and then we'll see what's there. Have you ever looked? The RMLD minutes? Yeah. Karen, do you, do you get the minutes from RMLD? I'm going to have to open that. I, you know, I saw the agenda. I don't think the minutes were in there. We post the minutes. minutes. Um, yeah. The RMLD website for all of the board, yeah. but I, I don't know how current they are. Like last night, the select board approved five sets of minutes. We had them in the office available, but they weren't online. So again, I don't okay. know the RMLD. I do think I've gone to RMLD, and they are posting stuff. Okay. Looks like March 21st are the most recent oh, that are posted. Okay. okay. Well, I can, tomorrow I can ask if they catch that up and say that the thing comment down. Okay. 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 <laughs> so those minutes are actually probably posted because that that's from the that's Still. from last winter. Uh, yeah. 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 Uh, just in case you need to know, RMLT Colleen is not presenting at the November town meeting because they changed their fiscal year. Um, she normally presents along with John the annual update. She's going to do that in April. And in the November 6th meeting, it is, uh, my understanding is Colleen, and we also invited Wendy, Wendy? Yes, the, yeah, finance, so the Wendy, finance director. Wendy's the number three. Is that it from a schedule okay. update? Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Any questions on the schedule? One more. Are we, are we posting for the 28th of October? Can you tell me? For the school? I think we have a little more, more after tomorrow night. But That's fair. We, we plan to post you and tell us otherwise. Okay. Yeah. I think where we landed right, was we, we, we could handle it on the 6th, but that, that's air in that direction. That's fine. So I would need to. We just have to get together and figure out yeah. Sorry, what the, the intent would be to be there while the school committee is discussing this topic? Okay. If it rolls. It, no, well that, you know, that's just the parents' point. If you do vote on the 28th and it's all wrapped up, someone can uh, send an email to all of town meeting members sooner than they'd otherwise going to know. Right. That's all. But the sixth. That's the advantage. Yeah, I'm not sure that's a strong enough case for another meeting. Um, <laughs> personally, to you. It's entirely up to you. I think we'll we just need majority. <laughs> <laughs> I, I definitely won't be here on the 28th, so you know, yeah, I'm gonna be in Las Vegas, suckers. So, you know, because I like to air on the side hosting, but I don't want to call, I don't want us to, yes, yeah, we're, 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 we're with you. Oh, yeah, five most junior members have to go. <laughs> oh, that's right. oh, did we talk about that policy? Yeah, the, yeah, the straw, yeah, all the short straws. Mm -hmm. um, that's it. Oh, you have minutes. I was just looking around to figure out how was the five most junior. You got to count this too. <laughs> Motion to approve the October 9th meeting minutes as presented in the packet. Second. All those in favor? I'm still stating I wasn't there. Uh, all those opposed? Abstain. I don't know how we do abstain. Ed, motion carries 8 0. Motion to One abstain. Second. 
What was your favorite? <laughs> you were staying for the journey? Oh, sorry. 9-0. <laughs>